Hi, I'm Colt Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, amateur tea toddler. I'm here at the Painted Teacup in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania because I need an expert on tea and this is the place to go. So I'm here to find out about tea and all the wonderful things they have here. Hi, I'm here with my new best friend and the head tea chief of the Painted Teacup. Mary, Mary, thank you for having me in here today. I really appreciate it. Um, I think what we all want to know is what makes a good tea? A good tea, you have to start with cold water and loose leaves. What makes a good tea? Um, the body of it, I guess. So what does that mean? You'll put a human body in there, right? No, no human okay, bodies. Um, just sort of, you steep the tea for five minutes mm -hmm. and you want it to be bold but not too strong. Now what is like, if you had to tell someone like one key equipment to have to make good tea, what would it be? I would say you have to have a diffuser. Oh, okay. You have to have a diffuser, a pot with a diffuser, so that you can make good tea from loose tea, not just a tea bag. Well, loose tea is the best. So you need a strainer so that you can put the loose tea bags in there, put that in your teacup or your teapot, let that seep, and then you have the best cup of tea. Much better than the bag teas. Okay, so loose tea over bag tea. Absolutely, 100%. A pot? A pot is all they need. What should that pot be made of? It doesn't matter. Any sort of pot you can heat? Pot. And not in the microwave. It has to be on the cooktop. You heard it here. No. Don't, no microwave. The microwave zaps the oxygen out of the water, and then you have a poor cup of tea. And you probably thought there wasn't science behind this. There is science. There is That's science. science right there. Now, what is your favorite tea? Uh, the Queen Mary. Oh, the Queen Mary. Yes. One, yes, yes. So I oh, like um, Snickerdoodle, Ooh. and but I also like the plain teas like Queen Mary. So does Snickerdoodle taste like Snickerdoodle cookies? Yes, it does. That sounds dangerous for my cholesterol. But I really like the orange, fruity, blossom, raspberry, orna, uh, 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 fruity teas. I do like the um, black orange. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do like black orange tea. Queen Mary. Oh, that was picked by someone else. What else? It's the best. And then a raspberry cranberry oolong. My mind just went in overload there. That was amazing. I like the garden party tea because it's floral and delicious. It sounds very regal too. Very regal. You have to be, you have to put the pinky up mm -hmm. when you're drinking that type of tea. Okay, so here at the painted teacup, how many teas do you actually have? We have probably close to 150 teas. Get out of town. Do you know all of them by name? I know most of them by name. Okay, them name them all right now. Oh, <laughs> I can't, not off the top of my head, but. I'll just I add this part so it looks, wow, you just named them all, but we couldn't do them because of time constraints. There, perfect. Now, what what makes this place just blow any other rinky-dink tea shop out of the water? The food, really, and, and I can't, the service too. We really, we really do try to please the customers and, the, uh, it's an experience more than a meal for me. They have the best teas, fresh tea, and uh, Mary's um, uh, scones and pastries are out of sight. Crazy good? Crazy good. Crazy and good. You always feel at home here. Oh yeah, do you? Always feel at home here, yes, yes. Everyone is friendly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a perfect place to bring my daughters and come with my mom so we can spend a girl's day. It's, um, not terribly expensive and it's always pleasant and fun and just beautiful atmosphere. Now besides tea I see a whole lot of other stuff here at the painted teacup. What else do you have here besides just wonderful tea and tea sandwiches? We have homemade crafts, we have gifts, we have scarves, oh. jewelry. This is really a one-stop shop. Okay now where do you get your things? Is it local, international? Some of it is local, some of it ma is made um, in Lancaster County, some of it is made in California. We sort of go all over to get. That's awesome. Is this your first time here? Yeah, it is, and I'm not even uh, I'm embarrassed to say because I live so close by, and this is a lovely, lovely place. I really, it's remarkable. I thought it was mostly a, a tea drinker's place, mm -hmm. much like a cigar place, but the variety and things in the I see these honeys and jellies I'm gonna 
get me some before I leave. Okay, so first impressions, you're blown away by all the variety they have here. It's remarkable. I don't know if there's another larger tea store in the Delaware Valley. I mean, is there such a thing? I don't think so. It really is, I think, a hidden gem here in Upper Darby. Uh, it's crazy. It's remarkably good. Now, how long have you been in business as a tea shop? Ten years. December 4th will be ten years. Oh my goodness, a whole decade. A whole decade. How long have you been at this location? Six years. Great. If I want to have a tea party with all my fellow explorers, how would I go about doing that? You would call the shop uh -huh. and we would check and schedule in our calendar and see when we can fit you in. So you should definitely call ahead. Absolutely. Right. It's not like Wawa where you show up, pound a touch screen and suddenly a tea comes out, right? No, everything is by reservation because we make everything fresh each morning. Ah, well that makes sense. We're open Tuesday through Saturday. Okay. Um, the tea lasts about an hour and a half and you get it in courses. Okay. Um, you get a little bit of a homemade pepper jelly, you get a choice of two loose teas, you get a selection of breads, a selection of tea sandwiches, selection of desserts. So you get lots of food um, and just time to talk and, and relax. Now, if you were to have a tea party and could invite any celebrity, alive or dead, who would you invite to this great epic tea party that you would have? I would invite Maya Angelou because Ooh. she is my absolute favorite recently deceased. Uh -huh. But I would absolutely have her in one second over and over and over again, I'm sure. Lucille Ball. Ooh, I do love Lucy indeed. How about, would Ricky be able to come? Possibly. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Well, Princess Di, if she was alive, so... Oh, that would be. That yeah. would be a really royal tea party. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Peter Sellers. Oh. Mm, Humphrey Bogart. Oh, delightful. Uh, the entire crowd agrees and nods that good old Bogart would be the person to invite. Oh, what's that chef on um, Food Network? A um, the young guy. What's his name? Florence. No, Florence. Yes. Florence. Yeah. So a young, attractive chef from the Food Network. That's what I want. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else to say, really. I don't think there is. Thank you for your time, Mary. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, that was very enlightening. I think so. And I think I know who I'm going to bring to my tea party, Groucho Marx, right? Be sure to check out my friends here at the Painted Teacup here in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. I'm Colt Sebastian Taylor, and I'll see you later. I'm here with my new best friend, Joan. Joan, oh, hello. Well then, I'm blushing.